turned my I've turned my mic up quite loud. Um, can you do the same for me and just type in the box if you can hear me, please? One person can. Okay, great. So it's looking good. So um, welcome. Um, it's very scary to be here when I look at the numbers of people in the room. Um, but it's a real There we go. Okay, so this is my agenda today. I want to look at some uh, types of business texts, um, where we can find them, what you can do with them once you've found them, um, and then something, um, yeah, that's really, <sighs> at the moment, quite a hot topic is staying on the right side of the law. Um, uh, so any time that I've marked with this little red asterisk, uh, or whatever it's called, this little red snowflake thing, um, I want to say to you, be careful, ask for permission, and um, just sort of don't do anything too dodgy there, like lots of photocopying and handouts, so at least you should know what, you, what you're allowed to do, okay? Um, I'll put up some links later on about staying on the right side of the law. This is... Um, Quite a hot topic in, uh, as I say, in uh, Central Europe and uh, Northern Europe, where where I am, um, and um, yeah, something that as teachers we should know about. But on the positive side, I'm going to be looking at uh, some tips, so some uh, practical tips and some teaching tips. Um, I'll show you where you can find some free resources, and um, I'll also put up some useful links at the end, and um, especially one to. Uh, sorry, my voice is not very clear. Maybe. Uh, let me see. I'm turned up as much as I can. Um, hopefully, the rest of you can still hear me. Um, yeah, um, a useful link, uh, especially one to a worksheet that I've written, especially for this uh, webinar. Okay. Right. Um, I'll put the mic a little bit closer to my mouth and hope that that works a bit better. And um, let's see. Move on to the next slide. Okay. So. Before we start, a tiny bit about me. Um, okay, great, so that's a bit better. Now I've got the mic closer to me. Um, in the top left-hand corner, you can see a picture of my hometown. Um, this is Brighton on the south coast of England. It's a very nice place. I lived there until I was in my mid-20s, at which point I moved to the place in uh, the bottom right-hand corner on the slide. That's Stuttgart in in Germany. So I've been here for the last 20 odd years. Um, on the map, here at the top, you can see Brighton, you can see Stuttgart. Um, I moved here because my husband's German. If anybody tells you that holiday romances don't last, um, we're the proof that they do. What you see here, um, the Duala Hochschule Baden-Württemberg, uh, this is where I teach mostly at the moment. Um, I've done a lot of in-company training in the past, but now I teach in this uh, university where the students, uh, <laughs> someone's written I love Brighton, great, so, uh, where the students are all actually employed by companies in the area, which it could be Daimler, Porsche, uh, Robert Bosch, big companies like that. And um, but they come and they're doing a bachelor degree, and I'm teaching international business um, in that university. So at the moment, my students are mostly 18 to 30, let's say. There are some older students, um, but I have done a lot of business English teaching. Okay. Um, Moving on. Okay, I've limited my teaching to the Duala Hochschule recently because um, I found that I need to spend a bit more time on the writing. Um, you may know one stop English, I hope you do, and if you don't, then by the end of this 45 minutes, um, do please take a look at the end. Um, the Guardian here, the Guardian newspaper, um, Together with One Stop English, we produce one set of uh, lessons. When I talk about a set, that's three lessons at advanced, um, intermediate, and elementary level, once a week. Um, each week, we're, they're based around a different article from The Guardian. Um, yeah. OK, and I do that together with my colleague, Tim Bowen. Yeah. On the right, Business Spotlight. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this magazine. 
uh, it's a German magazine, especially for um, learners of business English. But we also write lesson plans for, uh, around articles uh, from the magazine there. So they're up once a month, too on the website, One Stop English, and at the bottom you can see the business top trumps card. So these are, they, they also come with lesson plans. Um, okay, I think now Henry's put up the link on the left, so you can always scroll back later on and, and go and click on that link then. Okay, um, I'm going to have a little look, a tiny bit at these again later on, but just so that you know what I do, I'm dealing with um, text in the business classroom um, all the time, so teaching and writing. Okay. Right. So, just a moment, turn over my notes here. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a whirlwind tour today because there's such a lot that we could talk about with uh, using text out there. Um, here we've got five very different kind of, of texts. We've got um, articles there in the bottom, we've got a company brochure, we've got a headline in the middle, we've got advertising from um, some packaging, and on the top left we've got a piece of um, original writing. Okay? So we're going to take a, a close look at all of these a bit later on and uh, see what we can do with them. Okay. And move on. Okay. Um, Headlines, so the one that was in the middle there. Uh, this is something that we very easily kind of skip over and we go straight into the article. But in fact, headlines um, in their own right provide us with a, a lot of material for a, a lesson and, and lots of ways to lead in to um, a lesson. Okay, so if I give you um, a couple of ideas what you could do with headlines here. First of all, simply deciphering what they mean, because they're not always very straightforward. Um, passing the language, so looking at each part of the language, um, uh, individually the words or the, the expressions. We'll look at one of those in a moment. Um, you could get a whole load of headlines together, and then after looking at a few, decide which article you want to read, at which point you can then guess which words will appear, you know, this sort of predictive um, task five words that you think might appear in this article, following that up by uh, the article in the word cloud, cloud sorry, <laughs> losing my voice already, uh, little red snowflake thing is up there again, so you always need to be looking at um, permission and making sure you're allowed to use the articles, okay? Same again if you're going to cut them up and reassemble them, um, get a bit of, um, get some permission there. Let's have a look at um, number one and number two here, deciphering um, what the headlines mean, uh, passing the language. What I've got here is, um, I've just, for the, for the sake of this webinar, um, typed in a headline. But when I was first thinking about what could I talk about, this was one headline that was on the newspaper I was reading that day. So, Eurostar stake up for grabs in 10 billion pound state asset sell-off. Wow. If we take that piece by piece, we're looking at um, Eurostar. Well, this is a company name, isn't it? Um, it assumes some background knowledge. Um, so the first word already uh, could cause some problems if you don't know that Eurostar is actually a train. But you could do a bit of background research there. Um, stake, this is business vocab, isn't it? But it could be a noun or a verb. So which is it? Um, up for grabs, we've got our idiomatic phrase already, something's up for grabs, it's, it's available. The figure, 10 billion pounds, um, so we've got our currency symbol, we've got the figure, the number, and we've got the BN, so we've got a lot in that, those five little keystrokes, we've actually got loads in there, how to write um, a, a number like this and an amount like this where the currency symbol goes, have a look that there are no there are no dots, there are no gaps there, and we've got an abbreviation. And I've written up on my slide, because um, I do teach and work in, in uh, Germany, that there is actually a false friend alert here, because, um, to make sure I've got it right, I've written it down, a billion in German is actually a trillion in English. Yeah? So, um, yeah, okay, idiomatic, or whatever you want to call it. Um, sorry, fixed expression. Bit of a typo there. Um, then we go on for state. 
being a noun, not a verb. Asset, asset, asset. Pronunciation, yeah. And sell off again, it could be a verb or a noun. So we've actually got loads that we can do. Oh, minimal pair, stake, state, stake, stage, yeah, pronunciation. Okay. Um, so just simply with the headline, we've got a lot that we can work on, all right? Going on. Now, three and four on my list was um, after looking at a few, um, decide which article to read. So I'm taking this one as, uh, I'm assuming that the students have looked at a few and they said, okay, this is one that we want to have a look at, right? Um, by the way, why do I suggest that the students should have a look and choose? Why not just give them a link uh, and say to them, well, have a look at this link, go through there, read the article, and we'll talk about it next week or in the next lesson. That's something that I found works very well in um, theory, but when you put it into practice, as I said, my students are um, 18 to, or well, most of them are 18 to 25 years old. They've got other things on their mind. They're not necessarily um, reading up a long article in advance of their next English lecture. And um, unfortunately, the same goes for business people who are actually very busy in their everyday life. So um, when I have done this in the past, I've come up with maybe about 30% of the students actually follow the link, read up in advance. Um, so, um, and that causes you a bit of a problem, doesn't it? Because what are you going to do with them um, where the others are reading or vice versa? So, um, I've actually stopped doing that. Um, so, I'd rather give the students um, some headlines, sort of prepare this in advance and let them decide. Okay? Right. And you're all typing in the chat box, and it's actually kind of distracting me a little bit, so I'm going to give you a task to do. Um, we've got this headline here. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to type in three words that you think are going to appear in the article below this headline. So this is the headline, three words you think are going to appear in the article below it. 10 seconds starting now. Can you type the three words in the chat box? Okay, stop. That was your 10 seconds. Watch for you. Stop now. <laughs> um, so students, obviously, you're going to give them perhaps more than 10 seconds and more than 10 words. But um, how are we going to check this without reading the whole article? Um, bank, yes. Let's have a look. Okay. Do you know about word clouds? There are a lot of... Um, free programs online that you can use um, where you can put an article or a bunch of text um, into uh, the program online and it will show you the words that are most frequently used in that article. So anybody who wrote in the word bank won a prize here because that's obviously one of the most commonly used words in this article. So we can see bank, pay, allowances, uh, bonuses, HSB, restriction here. I'm not quite sure what PS is um, in this sense. We'd have to look in the article. But um, we can see the words that are commonly coming up in the article because um, they are um, bigger in the word cloud. Okay, again, um, when you're looking at word clouds, make sure you've got permission to be used in the article, right? Because you're really then using the article um, in a, a way other than the way it was intended, right? So this is um, headlines, just a couple of things. I'm telling you it's a whirlwind tour. We're gonna we're gonna move on, okay? Um, articles. This was my newspaper. Uh, I cut it up. I'm a teacher. I, uh, as well as writing, I'm still teaching. So um, I've, like you, probably got the scissors, the sellotape, the glue always at hand. Okay. Um, 
Why have I cut them up and stuck them onto pieces of paper, though? Firstly, I'm not doing any photocopying. I'm handing these out to the students. Okay. And when you hand um, an article out to the students, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but when I hand them out something like that, can you see my hand? The first thing they do is they turn it over to see what's on the other side. Sorry, yes, it shouldn't oohoo, it's a yoo-hoo stick, any kind of glue stick will do, right? So yeah, um, the, uh, the students, they, turn, they turn over and see what's on the back and they're already distracted. So if you stick it on a blank piece of paper, recycled paper, um, that avoids that. Plus it makes, uh, I mean, this newspaper is very thin paper, so it makes it a little bit durable, yeah. Okay, so that was one um, practical tip. Now we're going to go for legal tip. Hang on, we're going to my next slide. Now, you may not all have these in your classroom, but I do. Um, all of my lecture rooms or classrooms have got this funny machine uh, that you can see there on the left. And, and I wasn't even sure what it was called, but it's a very useful machine. Um, and somebody told me it's called a photographic projector. Maybe someone else here knows a better name for it. Uh, emo? Okay. Um, right. It's not an OHP. Uh, it's a camera. Okay. And it's linked to the data projector. And when you put the article underneath, as I have done here in the left photograph, the camera above this this arm, this head, it takes the photograph, but it's a it's a moving image. It's a live image and projects it via the data projector onto the screen. So you can see the same article on the left and on the screen there, okay? Digital blackboard, okay, maybe. Um, and this is a way, right, because I've been checking everything that um, I want to say today with um, a legal expert um, who deals with permissions and rights, copyrights. And this apparently would be one way um, where you can really legally use newspaper articles because you just really, it's like a show and tell, yeah? Um, the students at this point had um, already been working with the article and then they were presenting their findings and um, so we had this up on the board or via the projector um, so all the other students could see the photograph, the image that was being used and the, um, and, and the title, etc. Yeah? Right, a PDI, OH, well, is it not really an OHP? I can see that a lot of people um, have got different names for this machine. Perhaps um, someone at Macmillan can let me know what they call it. Um, all right, but you know what it looks like. Maybe you've got one, maybe you haven't. But if you have, this is one way you can use it, OK? Um, so talking of pictures, if we go on to um, the big picture. OK, so things that we can do with texts and um, articles in particular. Things you may already do, but um, doesn't hurt to go through them again just to jog our memories. We can summarize and we can retell the articles. We can practice our skimming and scanning skills. Um, read aloud. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to do this, and a lot of teachers don't like to do it in the classroom. And um, I've written students for you, um, but my students tell me they actually do like to read aloud because it's something that they have to present all the time. They have to read off the screens. So um, I wouldn't do it every day, but every now and again, why not? At the same time, I could have also added translation there because if you're in a monolingual class, translation um, of a business article is going to be a real life task for um, the students, isn't it? Okay, so we've got the set as a pre-class reading task, or uh, which <laughs> maybe your students are uh, more reliable than mine at doing this, um, and if not, as a post-class reading task. Okay, ah, somebody's found it's a document camera. Well done, thank you very much. Um, okay, um, write comprehension questions, but I think um, the students should be doing this, not you. Okay, if the students are at that level where they're able to do it, let them have a go at doing this. You can, of course, extend research and present anything, Eurostar, remember, from the headline. What, who, where is Eurostar? Get the students to do some research on the back of those articles and headlines, and obviously discuss and um, give their personal opinions. Whoops, that went on too far. Okay. Um, Yes, now we're moving on to um, 
and the more kind of creative things that you can do with the articles. So you can get your scissors out. Remember the little uh, red snowflakes there? Get the scissors out, reassemble, jigsaw reading, information exchange, misinfections. You know, cut bits off and put them back together again. Uh, business students still like to do this, I've found, um, no matter how old they are. Um, if it's, if it's a longer article in sections, um, they could write some subheadings for each of the sections, as they might be doing in, in other business documents, for example, reports, whatever. Um, if we don't like the headline, they could invent, I've written better, but maybe um, clearer headlines and titles. Um, now, I've got one here, but I don't, if I hold this up, do you see a mirror image, or do you see, no, you see the right image, don't you? Okay. Um, this one says, insurance furore, or furore, um, finance chiefs demand watchdog's head, right? I was just reading this at lunchtime. It's a headline um, from a financial page or, or a city page of a magazine, and I thought, well, if you're a student, Finance chiefs demand watchdogs' heads. It almost sounds, uh, <laughs> it almost sounds like um, you're being cruel to animals, doesn't it? So we could invent here a new, better, clearer headline and title. Okay. Um, word frequency, word class. We'll have a look at. We're looking at the genre, length, style, pre-knowledge pre such as the Eurostar, HSB as a bank, and um, also images and graphs, as I just showed you on the. Document camera, I think it was called. Yeah. Um, all of these things, by the way, um, they're all written down for you in the worksheet that I'm going to give you a link to at the end, which you can then use as much or as little of as, as you want. Okay. Oops. To move my slides on. Oh, not always so easy to do this. How are you feeling, by the way? Are you okay? Chat box has gone quiet. Oh, yes, good. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we looked at the big picture, looked at two things, the big picture, but you know, actually, we're language teachers, and we should also be looking at the small picture, too. Um, so, you know, that means getting down to the uh, nitty-gritty of, um, of the words the keywords that we need to understand the article, um, the types of words that, the, um, that are used in the article, especially, I think, in business classes, we want to be looking at um, ESP, English for Specific Purposes, um, vocabulary fields there. Um, so finance, uh, we had a finance article title there beforehand, all the words that are to do with finance and banking and taxing and all those kind of things, yeah? And um, you could pull those out, get them to write them down. Abbreviations, short forms and acronyms, these things are changing and we're getting more and more and more of them all the time in the business world. Um, just a couple of days ago, I read an article about MOOCs. Um, do you know what MOOCs are? No, because <laughs> there's somebody. <laughs> That's great. So at least I know you can hear me. OK, MOOCs are one of the next big things in um, learning. Massive open online courses. Are they being called MOOCs? Yeah, someone's written it down. OK, all right, but that is just an example of these acronyms that are being chucked at us all the time, not to mention things like still going back to finance again, the, the IMF or the World Bank, the WB, you know, um, or the Central European Bank, the CEB. Uh, OK, so we were looking at those. Collocations, word pairs, I think normal teaching there. Fixed expressions like up for grabs, maybe it wasn't idiomatic. Uh, metaphors, alliteration, the style of the writing, um, tensing, tenses and structures, all those things that we can do with any old business text um, or we should be doing because uh, of uh, being language teachers. Okay? Now, hang on. I've been talking about a worksheet where all these uh, things are written down. 
This is what the worksheet looks like with a very bad screenshot, okay? Um, I have put it up as a PDF on my website to which I'm going to give you uh, the link later on, okay? This is a worksheet that you can use in your class. I'm happy for you to print it out, download it. The only thing I'd ask you not to do is to um, upload it um, onto a wiki or, or your own website. Um, just use it for yourself, okay? Okay. All right. Moving on. Tea. Anybody drinking a cup of tea at the moment? I wouldn't mind a cup of tea at the moment. My mouth's a bit dry. Um, so what we've got here are also lots of other kind of business texts, aren't they? Um, we're moving away from articles and magazines. Um, packaging. Packaging provides us with um, a wealth of information that we could use. If you're teaching marketing like I have to do, something like this is, is a gold mine. Ah, some leather hot chocolate. Great, okay. Um, right, hang on a second. Just need to rearrange my, my notes a little bit here. The packaging. <laughs> I'm dying for a cup of tea. So yeah, me too. Um, right. Pucker. By the way, anybody got an idea what pucker means? Or pucker? Pucker. Pucker's a term used in British English to say that something's the, the real thing. So, um, for example, um, you could say that this DVD is not a bootleg, it's pucker, right? But here it's the name of a tea. So, um, what you can see here is the back of the box, the inside lid, you've got the tea bag, the, the package that the tea bag comes in, and um, we can see advertising texts here. We can see uh, texts that give us information, the ingredients, the, the sources, where they come from, things about the company. We can see um, information about quality assurance. So down here, we've got the little um, the logos at the bottom stating um, that they've been approved. Uh, we've got instructions how to actually um, here we go, infused for at least five minutes, preparation instructions. Um, we can look at the style of the text, the way that it's been written, because I don't know if you can see in the top left, it says PS. So it's written almost uh, like somebody's writing you a letter, very informal, but it's a marketing and advertising text. Yep. Um, here we can look at the, the register. Because of this, we're probably looking at um, neutral to informal register on this product. Um, and if I move on to the next slide, there's a close-up of some of the language. Um, oh, hang on a second. There. Um, terrible screenshot there. I apologize for it. But um, in pink, I've underlined, thank you for choosing, and enjoy it and stay well, because I feel that's like somebody's writing to me personally. And um, I've highlighted the words in yellow. I mean, listen to a unique blend to soothe digestion, a great alternative to, to harness their incredible potential, deliciously sweet and calming, wonderfully rich and nourishing, soothing aromatic flavor. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel when you read this kind of text? Relaxed. Yes, relaxed and thirsty, nice, fine. Yeah, it's, it's advertising language that works, isn't it? It really, really works. Um, so this, as I say, wealth of information. Um, by the way, um, I bought this box of tea in Germany, and it was an imported product. It was more expensive than the local tea. Um, so these things are available outside of the UK or the USA. And yes, it was rather nice tea. Okay. Um, I'm not here advertising the tea, so I um, probably should move on, um, because we don't always uh, want fuzzy, warm language. We uh, want to look at company materials too, okay? Um, this comes from, hang on a bit, oh, there we go, company brochure, my next door neighbor's company, to be honest, he's let me use his brochure. Um, I put a little asterisk, a little star there, or a little red snowflake again, to warn you to be careful, but 
actually I think this is the one that you're most um, likely to get permission for because if you're teaching in company, um, I'm sure the company is going to want you to use their own materials, okay? So let's have a little um, quick look at some of the things, excuse me, turning my notes over, look at the things that we can do with company brochures, okay? I've got a lot of real life usages here for this kind of brochure. We can analyze the text as above, as we've talked about, yeah? Um, we can translate, I've written translating because um, I think if you're working in company, you're more likely to be in a monolingual um, atmosphere. So um, if I was teaching in this company, very likely the students are all going to be Germans learning English. They have. Uh, company material, they've got brochures, uh, websites, etc. in English, we could translate, but we could translate back to German, couldn't we? And we could hold both the brochures and compare our translations with, um, uh, okay, no, it's not always 100% correct English, it all depends who's um, uh, been in the translation, but that's something we could look at, yeah? Um, but we could just more, moreover, we could discuss the images. I think it would be even more important. Now, I'm seeing a machine here that I have no idea what it's all about. So the students are going to, um, they're going to tell me about the machine, yeah? How it works, who it's for, what its benefits are. Um, this translates into real life tasks for sales reps. Um, troubleshooters who, who may be going to other countries to show people how to how the machine works, how to set it up. But they all need to do this in English. Yeah? Um, people who may, may be a company, so company employees who might be going to trade fairs, and they're going to be talking about their machines. So talking me through it in the safe environment of the classroom, uh, using the text, looking at the language that the company uses, um, it's going to be a good use of, of this kind of material. Yeah? Um, we've looked at lots of talking uh, tasks, but um, I think we can also include some writing tasks here. So, for example, if this wasn't your own company, um, you might want to know more about the material. So you're going to write a letter uh, requesting for more information or for a catalog or asking for an appointment at the trade fair or for a rep to come and visit you. So, yeah, there's loads of things that we can do with company materials too. Yeah? Okay. How are we doing, time? We're doing okay. I've got a feeling I'm going quite fast through here, um, but I said, well, we didn't know before. But, um, you know, this is being recorded, so you can always go back and um, have another look or listen to the parts you may have missed later on. Okay. Moving on. Students writing. Again, something that... Um, great, it's not too fast. It's okay. Thank you very much. Um, something... It's, it's, it's a very rich source of material, this, and I don't know that we actually use it as much as we should or could do. Um, my students at the moment are mostly C1 level students. Um, their spoken English is C1. Their written language is B2, sometimes even B1 in worst cases. Um, and that's actually sort of where they need the most practice. So um, I know I know that um, it's been said that writing in the classroom is a waste of time, but I actually uh, don't believe that because I think there's a lot we can get out of this. Um, setting a writing task, collaborative task to um, set it up, for example, but then writing on your own, passing your your uh, the writing around, they can get peer feedback. They can give each other corrections, they can discuss it, they can make improvements, analyze the writing in the way that we've done above. You as a teacher can use the writing as a needs analysis, so you know what do we actually need to look at, what mistakes are the students making over and over again. Um, but we can also look at the bigger picture again, ask the students once they've exchange their texts, how they would feel if this is a, an announcement of a takeover here. So it was, the students were writing a press release, yeah? Um, but it could be a, a letter of complaints uh, or anything. Ask the students how they would feel if they got this letter and write a response back, okay? Maybe something that you do anyway, but um, I see this as, as um, business texts. 
the texts. Yeah. Um, something that I do do, and I do have the permission of the students, or at least they know that's what I do. Um, I often I take their writing home. I take it home and mark it. I don't get paid for it. But what I do is I often scan it in, as I've done with this one. You see that um, it's, it's not a bad screenshot. I've actually cut off the top so that the um, and the bottom, so that the student's name is missing and uh, any other personal details are missing. And then I use this. Uh, the student writing, I can I can show them to other classes. Right? I'm teaching in, in one university, so they're all doing the same kind of course. But I can show the writing from the fifth semester students, for example, uh, to the first semester students, and they and vice versa, and they can have a look at each other's writing. Yeah? And because they're often working on an international basis, um, so the partners that they're working with won't necessarily have perfect English either, but we need to know. Uh, but anyway, it's, I want to say it's, um, it's a source that we shouldn't forget about. Okay. Right. Uh, moving on. Note the little star in the corner there. Um, the letter from Cadbury actually was um, a letter replying to a complaint made uh, by my mother, and I got the letter off her. Now, I wouldn't use this as it is in the classroom. Uh, again, and the other one on the right, sorry, that's an email. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's an email uh, invoicing they can see and um, given information about an order that was made, confirmation. Um, you may not want to use this, or you may not be allowed to use these exactly as they are, but you only need a couple. Uh, and you can use them as models for your own writing. There was a, another webinar recently um, by a lady called Rachel Roberts, and she was talking about um, how teachers should write their own materials, right? Because it doesn't take a lot for a teacher. I know you might have to put in 10 minutes of preparation work, uh, but to, to use these um, as a model. Change the details, and you've got yourself a wonderful, almost authentic um, piece of business writing. Okay? Right. Let me see. Okay, so I'm coming towards the end of my slides here, 29 of 34. Um, we're going to come to the freebies in a moment, but before we do, I'd just like to recap what we've looked at so far. Um, we've looked at articles from magazines and newspapers. We looked at headlines in particular. We looked at company brochures, um, students writing just now, and here on this slide we've got letters and emails. Yeah? Um, moving on. There we go. Okay, back to what I showed you at the beginning, the, um, the Guardian and the Business Spotlight news lessons. Because I keep saying, you know, ask for permission, and, and it's not very easy, to be honest, to, to uh, for in, in an international setting. You can ask in a company you're working in, you can ask your students, but it's not so easy to write to international um, institutions, newspapers, uh, TV, um, on the BBC or whatever, wherever you're going. So, okay, we have here ready-made and legally photocopyable lesson plans. Okay, from the Guardian, we have our weekly news lessons. Um, if you can read it, um, the latest. This is a screenshot I did a couple of days ago. The latest news lesson is on music, um, music streaming. Right, uh, this is one I wrote, but it's also one I'm using with my students. Um, because at the moment we've got a quite a good course book, but unfortunately it's two or three years old, and uh, we're looking at advertising, and the question is, how often do you buy CDs? Well, all my students go, never, yeah? because this is what they do, music streaming. Yeah? So here we've got an example of where um, the, the news lesson, the article, can be used to supplement the course book. So I'm using this one actually next week with my students again. Um, okay, uh, these uh, Guardian lessons, there is one a week free, uh, sorry, one a month is free for everybody. Uh, the other three, you need to be um, a signed up member. Uh, the details of how you do that's on the website, I'm not going to tell you about that. But there are some that are really 
absolutely free you can download them, print them out, use them in your classroom, you just can't upload them anywhere else. Uh, same goes with the business spotlight lessons, which are really business based. A lot of the Guardian ones um, are crossover to general English, of course, but some of them are business, yeah? So business spotlight, obviously, obviously they're all up to date, um, business text, business articles, um, you can access those on the uh, I write, I write those once a month, by the way. You can access those once a week. Because again, I think Henry just put up the, uh, the link. As I say, it's not all free, but some of it is. And um, there's such a lot of welfare that um, the stuff that is free, well, you know, give it a try first and then see how you go. Moving on. OK. If you um, do go to the Business Spotlight lessons and you download one of those, they all come with um, teaching tips, the teacher's notes at the beginning. And each one of these has got um, a teaching note, so teaching tips and strategies. And these are usually to do with um, using texts uh, in the classroom. Here, the one that I've uh, circled is uh, the teaching and learning strategy is working with long texts. OK? Now, if you're uh, not a member of the One Stop English classroom, uh, staff room, and you want to have a look at a couple of teaching texts, you can go to the um, EL Gazette, the latest version of which is online right now. Uh, you just have to sign up and you can have a look at it. And you, I'm going to give you a link a little bit later on. Uh, there you've got some of the teaching tips that I have written into the Business Spotlight lesson plans in an article in the EL Gazette. So that's something else you can uh, have a look at after this um, webinar. Okay. Right. So here I've got a few resources and links for you, onestopinglish.com, but I think these have been going up <laughs> in the chat box um, anyway. Um, I put up the Macmillan uh, Business English online net there. Um, the third one down, that's a link directly to the EL Gazette, um, EL Gazette article I just showed you. ELPix.com and uh, ELT Teacher to Writer, I put those up because they're very interesting, um, sort of wonderful material, also free stuff for teachers um, on the ELT Pix, so have a look at those. On the right, um, copyright. Copyright in the USA, copyright in the UK, copyright in Germany related to schools, state schools, not private language schools, OK? Um, these are a couple of links that you can go through if you work um, in any of those three countries. If you work in another country, which I'm sure a lot of you do, because I've been seeing Kazakhstan, Romania, Russia, Mexico, wonderfully far from flung place. Excuse me, my tongue's getting tight now. Um, far flung places. Um, I have no idea about the copyright law. Oh, Greece, okay. I have no idea of the copyright laws in your country. I'm asking uh, you to go and have a look for yourself there, okay? Um, but as you can see, it's mostly available online, yeah? Right. The worksheet. I promise I'd tell you where to find this worksheet. Um, that's up on my website, uh, which is www compass-elt.de, I believe .com works too. And um, where you need to go to get the worksheet is if you go to the this uh, menu on the left, you see conferences, webinars, click there, and you'll come through to where well, you'll see the logos of the Macmillan webinars under something that says latest news. And there I've put up um, a link and that takes you to a PDF that you can download straight away. Okay? Um, don't please all do it on at the same time and crash my website. Okay? But um, anyway, as I said, that was uh, the worksheet that kind of like a framework that uh, Henry's, Henry's uh, put up the link there on the left um, so you can look at it directly from the chat box. Um, yeah, you can use this as a framework for any uh, text. Any text, really, um, uh, could be the advertising, could be the articles from the magazines and newspapers, could be the company brochures. You can use that as a framework worksheet um, for all of all of those kinds of texts. Okay. Phew. I, you know, I think I have to have a sip of water. And um, actually, I think I've come to my last slide. So. 
Henry, can I hand over to you for a sec while I have a sip of water? Hi, Karen, of course you can. Thank you for uh, such a great talk. Um, and I hope everyone took uh, a lot away from that. Um, important point to remember, obviously, to be clear on your copyright when using the text. I'm just going to turn off the recording now because um, I think we've come to an end. Is there anything you want to add, Karen? I um, just want to say a quick thank you to everyone for coming. Right. Well, that's exactly just what I wanted to say. Basically, everybody yeah. who's been here, over 200 people in the room, that's overwhelming, it's, it's wonderful, and I'm so pleased that these webinars can reach so many people around the world, it's wonderful. Thank you all for being here and giving up a whole hour of your afternoon. Okay, let's all say bye to Karen then, thanks Karen again, and like she said, um, great to see so many of you today, um, please spread the word about the recording as well, I'm just going to turn off the recording now. Okay.